Howdy, my name's Rob. I go by Bear on the GTO forum. I'm going to attempt to shoot some video today that shows the process of fitting one of the new BOP one piece rear main seals into a 400 Pontiac. That's the three inch main drum. And we'll see how it goes today. Okay, this is one of the new BOP one piece rear main seals. You can see that it is continuous, it doesn't have any brakes in it, and it also has two sealing lips on it, which uh, you're supposed to put some grease in there before you install it, which helps to lubricate and also to help seal it. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but right here in this one little spot, there's a little circle or a little hole in one of these square notches. That's where you're supposed to cut it. The uh, idea is that when you install this, you cut it there <clears throat> and put it around the sealing surface on the crank and then install the crank and the seal together. The idea being that since you made that cut, the two halves there will mate up perfectly when you put it back in and it's supposed to be installed down so that this uh, cut line actually winds up being at the top of the block when it's installed. And these square notches go towards the back to uh, face the uh, torque converter, flex plate, flywheel, whatever you're using on your car. So I'm going to walk you through some instructions that I got from the guys at BOP about how to properly fit one of these things. Alright, now this is information that's not currently in their installation instructions, although the guys at BOP told me that they're going to be adding that soon. One of the critical dimensions for the seal is you want to measure the diameter of the sealing surface on your crank here and compare that to the relaxed, uh, non-distorted inner diameter of the seal and you want the seal to wind up being just a tiny bit smaller than the uh, diameter of the crank but no more than 20 thousandths of an inch smaller. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the uh, diameter of my crank sealing surface here. And my trusty dial cal calipers. And let's see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's 3.186 inch, inches. So the seal, uh, as shipped, it's a little hard to try to get this measured correctly without uh, distorting the lip, so you have to be very careful. You want just a relaxed diameter. I'm going to do this in a couple different places. So it's about 3.17 thereabouts and so we're about ten thousandths under with it relaxed so we'll now we need to measure what it's going to look like when you put it in the block okay now the next thing I'm going to try to do is get an accurate diameter of the ceiling groove in the block and in the main cap a little bit tougher to do because I have to do it with a depth knife and add the two measurements together so I'll try to get the measurement here That's 1.881 1 1. on that side. Okay, now we'll measure on the cap side. Okay, so the 
cap is a little bit deeper than it is on the block side. So we have 1.881 plus 1.897 gives us the total diameter. And the last thing we're going to do is to try to get a measurement on the uh, seat itself on the outside. Being careful not to crush it. Measure it in a couple of different places. So the outside of the seal is 3.835, but when you add up the two measurements that I got on the inside of the sealing surface on the main cap, it works out to be 3.778. So what's going to happen if I just cut this seal and put it in there, it's going to crush it down and make the uh, inside diameter too small. It's also going to distort the parting line. So what I'm going to have to do in order to fit this correctly is actually sand the outside of the seal and move some material from the outside to make the outside diameter smaller. Well, I'm fortunate to have a nice shop with quite a few tools, but it seems like you never had quite enough. So I had to make a, a little mandrel here about wrapping some tape around the holes on and hold the seal so I can try to spin it to sand some off. measured my seal group with 3.77 so I've got about another five or six thousandths to go. I'm going to finish that last little bit um, by hand. Okay, I put the seal in the block and I've test fitted. I just kind of have these nuts snug down. Don't know if you can see or not, but right there where my finger is, it's kind of pooched up a little bit. The uh, seal is just a little bit distorted, which means that I still haven't removed enough material off of there because that'll make it distort when I torque that cap down. So I'm going to take it back out and uh, trim a little bit more off the back side of it. Well, I have the uh, seal trimmed down in there now. It's nice and smooth. There's no bumps. There's no distortions. So we'll measure and see what diameter we have the inside. It's about 3.171. Remember the uh, Outside of the uh, crank, or the inside of the ceiling surface on the crank was 3.185. So that gives me 14,000 smaller for the ceiling surface, which is just about perfect. It is not under 20, which is the limit that BOP says. And so what I'll do now is uh, take the seal out, cut it in the spot where it's supposed to be cut, and refit it one more time. Make sure everything looks good. And then we can uh, start thinking about laying the crank in there for the last time, hopefully.
Okay, got the seal out. And remember that uh, the spot where it has the little hole is where you cut it. And you can actually see where I had to sand quite a bit of material off of there to actually expose that metal ring that's inside it. Well, that's where the cut line is. It's where the open spot on the ring is. And so we'll take our razor blade and very carefully cut right straight down. Alright. Done. So now when we install it, these two halves of the seal should be made up perfectly and restore the seal. That's the whole idea. We will try it out here in a little while, as soon as I get everything cleaned up and ready to put the crank in. Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to see about putting the crank in the lock that I prepared for the rear main seal yesterday. What I've done so far today, there we go. I have uh, cleaned off the backsides of all the bearings and the, the uh, block pad with uh, a good acetone type cleaner to make sure there's no oil on the back side of the bearings or in the box. So I don't have to worry about a bearing turning. So put just a little bit of silicone, <clears throat> not a whole lot, just a tiny bit inside the uh, seal. I've also put just a little bit, you can probably even see it there, of uh, aircraft gasket sealer on the block so that when the cap goes down, the cap makes a little bit of there. So, we'll give that a shot. Move the camera back over here. Get a better view. The other thing that I've done is I've hung the crank onto my uh, engine hoist so I can lay it down in there a little bit easier. Like a whole lot easier, I hope. Also, this is the rear main seal. And you should be able to see that I have filled the cavity in between the two seal lips with some good uh, high quality high temperature grease. You should be able to see right there where I've cut it to get ready to install it. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this on the crank with the uh, little square notches towards the back. The uh, break and the seal is oriented downward so that it fits in the bottom part of the block. And then we'll see about laying this rascal in there, hopefully for the last time. Get this around and see if we can print. Again, this one will be the best. Probably my wife calling me to have a lunch. So maybe we'll stop here for a minute. And move the camera around, hopefully, so that everybody can see better. Uh, I put an ink mark on, you won't be able to see it from the angle right now, but I put a little uh, marker on the top of the seal opposite where the cut is, so I'll be able to be sure that I keep it aligned. This crank is heavy. The first time I tried to do this, I tried to put it in and, and do the seal myself, and that just didn't work well at all. And so this time, a little bit smarter, hopefully, and um, use the hoist to let it crank in there. This time, good luck. No issues.
together. Bearings are good. Awesome. So the next thing I'll do is I'll put a little, more, little bit of sealing in the rear top, rear main cab to go around the top side of the seal, put that down, and uh, make sure I get assembly lube on all of the main journals and all the bearing halves and shells and caps. And we can continue with assembly. Yay! This was a lot easier than the first time I did it, I can tell you that. Hope this helps people who are uh, trying to do the same thing I'm doing here. Thanks everybody. Bye.